Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Trump administration's reportedly launched cyber attacks against Iran is announcing a new wave of sanctions today. This comes days after President Trump abruptly called off military strikes against Iran. Trump said he called off the attack after he was told it could kill 150 Iranians. Trump and members of his administration said they would be open to holding negotiations with Iranian leadership, but Iran has said they will not negotiate as long as sanctions are still active. Meanwhile, an Iranian news outlet reported the country's naval chief is warning it'll shoot down more U.S. drones after the disputed downing of the spy drone last week that Iran says entered its airspace, while the U.S. claims it was flying over international territory. In an interview with NBC's Meet the Press, Chuck Todd asked Trump whether he felt he was being pushed into military action by his advisors. I have two groups of people. I have doves and I have hawks. Yeah, you have some serious hawks. I have hawks. some hawks. Oh, yeah, John Bolton is absolutely a hawk. It's up to him. He'd take on the whole world at one time, okay? But that doesn't matter, because I want both sides. In immigration news, Immigration and Customs Enforcement announced Friday it would start a mass roundup of thousands of immigrants starting Sunday after the name Family Op, saying it would take out families targeting 10 cities. On Saturday, amidst national outcry, President Trump backtracked on the plan, saying he would delay the deportations by two weeks and put the onus on Democrats to make changes to immigration policy if they want to avoid thousands of families from being deported. But some media reports claim the delay was prompted by a leak by acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleenan or a staff which could have compromised the plan. Democratic lawmakers accused the Trump administration of using the threat of mass deportations as a bargaining chip to push its immigration agenda. Texas Congressmember Joaquin Castro said the threat to knock and drag people away from their families and out of their communities shouldn't be a negotiation tactic for an American president, he said. A number of cities said they would not cooperate with ICE if they started to carry out mass removals. The Los Angeles Police Department tweeted it would not participate in any immigration enforcement activities, and the newly elected mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, announced she withdrew ICE's access to Chicago's police immigration databases. In other immigration news, Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott announced Friday he would deploy a thousand additional National Guard troops to aid the federal government government and what he calls the crisis at the border. New accusations of rape have been levied against President Trump. Famed advice columnist and former television host E. Jean Carroll is accusing Trump of raping her in the 1990s in a dressing room at Bergdorf Goodman department store. Carroll writes Trump asked her to try on lingerie he was planning on buying as a gift before he entered a dressing room with her and forced himself on her, kissing and then raping her. Trump denied the accusation multiple times over the weekend and said he did not know and had never met Carol, despite a photo which accompanied the book excerpt showing the two of them together at a party in the 1980s. At least 22 women have accused Trump of assault or sexual misconduct. In a now infamous Access Hollywood recording released in 2016, before the election, Trump boasts about his ability to sexually assault women. E. Jean Carroll, who's now 75, also accuses former CBS CEO Les Moonves of groping her in the elevator of a Beverly Hills hotel in the 90s after an interview. Moonves resigned last year from CBS while facing multiple sexual assault and sexual harassment allegations. In Turkey, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's AK party lost a re-election after residents of Istanbul went to the polls for a second time and again voted an opposition candidate, Ekrem Imamoglu, of the Republican People's Party, as the new mayor. The election do-over was called after the AKP first lost the crucial vote in March and alleged voting irregularities. The results bring to an end the 25-year rule by the AK party in Erdogan's home city of Istanbul. This is the new mayor, Ekrem Imamoglu. This is a new beginning. I would like to say from here that as of tomorrow, I will treat 16 million people equally as mayor.
In Ethiopia, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said the Army Chief of Staff and another top military official were killed Saturday by the chief's bodyguard in connection with a failed coup attempt against the northern regional government of Amhara. The government of Amhara, the governor of Amhara, was also killed earlier on Saturday. Internet access was cut off following the news, and checkpoints were set up around the capital, Addis Ababa. Prime Minister Ahmed says the attacks were not motivated by ethnic tensions, although few details are still known about the attempted coup perpetrators. Ahmed came to power last year and made history by signing a peace agreement with neighboring Eritrea. Ethnic conflict, however, continues to plague Ethiopia, causing massive displacement. Ahmed survived a grenade attack at a rally a year ago. Hundreds of activists entered and occupied an open coal mine, uh, open pit coal mine in the western Rhineland region of Germany Saturday to protest Europe's dependency on fossil fuels amidst the mounting climate crisis. The protest ended Sunday after police repeatedly ordered them to leave, citing life threatening danger. Some of the protesters were pulled out by authorities. The group was part of a larger gathering of an estimated 6,000 people who held several actions as part of the protest effort. Another group camped out on rail tracks leading to a coal-fired power station blocking trains from entering or leaving the area. This is Catherine Henneberger, a member of the environmental group Ende Glende, which coordinated the attacks. More than 6,000 climate activists from across Europe were here in the Rhineland this weekend. We shut down the entire Rhineland region's lignite production. We are fighting for the immediate stop of coal production, but we have to do a lot more. We demand a different economic system, one that is socially fair and respects our planet's limits. Catherine Henneberger, a member of the environmental justice group Ende Glende, which coordinated the actions. You can see Democracy Now! is reporting on the resistance against German coal mines from our COP23 coverage at our website, democracynow.org. In New York City, police arrested 70 climate activists from the group Extinction Rebellion Saturday as they called on The New York Times to up their coverage of the climate crisis and start using terms like climate emergency instead of climate change. Activists stopped traffic in the busy Midtown neighborhood, with some scaling the New York Times building and the Port Authority bus terminal to unfurl banners. The New York chapter of Extinction Rebellion recently shared a climate media standards guide, which includes changes to language, banning ads from fossil fuel companies and linking weather-related stories to the climate crisis. Independent Senator, 2020 Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders is introducing legislation today that would cancel all $1.6 trillion of student loan debt in the United States, which affects around 45 million people. The measure would be paid for with a new tax on Wall Street. The bill will also make public universities and community colleges free, a key pillar of Sanders' education platform. Congress members Ilhan Omar and Pramila Jayapal are introducing accompanying legislation in the House. In Indiana, South Bend Mayor, 2020 presidential hopeful Pete Buttigieg, is facing growing backlash from some of his constituents in the aftermath of the police shooting of Eric Logan, an African-American man killed by a white police officer last week. Buttigieg has left the campaign trail to return to his home town, where some residents called him out for neglecting his duties as mayor during a tense town hall on Sunday. Frustrated citizens confronted the mayor about his track record on race-related issues and demanded transparency in Eric Logan's case. The mayor, Rahm Emanuel, quit being the mayor because there was a cover-up. So I just want to make sure that you are aware that we're looking for no cover-up. We want transparency, total transparency. People of color make up 40 percent of South Bend's population. Mayor Buttigieg acknowledged efforts to diversify and increase accountability in the South Bend police force had failed, and it was less diverse than he came into office eight years ago. He's called for a Justice Department investigation into the shooting. The police officer was wearing body cam, but it was not turned on. 
Eddie Africa, a member of the Move 9, was released from a Pennsylvania prison Friday after spending 40 years behind bars. Eddie Africa was convicted, along with eight others, in the 1978 killing of police officer James Rapp. The nine were arrested following a Philadelphia police raid on the House of Move, a radical anti-police brutality and largely African-American organization. His release follows that of Janine Phillips Africa and Janet Holloway Africa last month. Husband and wife Mike Africa Sr. and Debbie Africa were both released last year. Two members of the group remain behind bars. And on Saturday, Japanese-American activists and survivors of U.S. internment camps engaged in civil disobedience outside Fort Sill Army Post in Oklahoma, where the Trump administration plans to indefinitely detain 1,400 immigrant and refugee children starting next month. Fort Sill was used as an internment camp for Japanese-Americans in 1942. This is Michael Ishii, who helped organize Saturday's protest. I am here, a descendant to support my elders who have come to bear witness and to raise their collective voices in opposition to mass detention. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.